How fast should the world stop using fossil fuels? That's the sticking point at the United Nations-led COP28 climate summit in Dubai. The summit was scheduled to wrap up earlier today, but there's a fight over the wording of a draft agreement released Monday, many countries criticizing it as too weak because it omitted a phase-out of fossil fuels. Here to explain this standoff is our environment reporter, Valerie DeKimp. Now, Valerie, reaction to this draft has been overwhelmingly negative. Can you just break down what the language is in it? Right. I mean, we're really getting into the fine print of the draft, but that fine print will actually determine the level of ambition and success of uh, COP28. So essentially, previous draft had multiple options in terms of phasing down, reducing fossil fuels, or phasing out, ending fossil fuels. Now, a fossil fuel phase out uh, was actually dropped in the latest um uh, draft that we have here, and it was replaced by the following uh, call to reduce both consumption and uh, production of fossil fuels to achieve net zero by before or around 2050. So a rather vague uh, timeline here. Uh, the language was significantly weakened by the fact that the fossil fuel phase out was removed from the text. That being said, the fact that countries are being required to reduce uh, fossil fuel production, that in a way has has the same meaning of a phase down, but without the contentious wording and language of what a phase down would actually mean for some countries really pushing against that kind of language. Another interesting point, the text also mentions fossil fuel production instead of just fossil fuels in a rather vague way. And this is important because if we just mentioned fossil fuels, it would be seen as a get out clause for many countries uh, that believe that they could be using carbon capture and storage technology to, to trap emissions and say, hey, we're trapping emissions and we can continue to produce fossil fuels. Uh, that technology, by the way, which is extremely expensive and nobody has proven that it can be effective and actually deployable on a large scale. So that's sort of uh, some of the bad, but not so bad in what's in, in this draft. So what are the chances of a fossil fuel phase out making it back into the draft? Or at, at this point, is it just we've got to get something that can pass? Well, the fact that it has been removed, it would be more difficult to put it back in. But again, you know, the history of climate summits have shown that anything can happen really uh, in the last few days and hours. Uh, what we know is that the UAE presidency has said a new draft will be published at 6 p.m. local time. Uh, for the last 12 hours, they have received comments, inputs from other countries. They need to revise that draft based on those comments. We also know that a group of countries called the High Ambition Coalition working for a higher uh, ambition in this outcome. They want to propose an alternative as well uh, and submit it to the presidency. Once that draft is published, again, we're entering into another phase of more tense and tense negotiations based on what's in it if countries actually do accept uh, what's actually been revised. Uh, if a fossil fuel phase out or a phase down does make it back into the text, that would imply actually a compromise with oil producing countries, uh, OPEC countries that have come under fire for really pushing hard against any notion of a fossil fuel phase out. And the problem is that it's not just those countries. India, China have also indicated quite clearly that they are not in favor of that language. So it shows you that it's, you know, the situation is a lot more complex than just oil producing countries versus the rest of the world. And, you know, it was supposed to end today. It has not happened. And just to give you an indication, a press conference with U.S. climate envoy John Kerry was supposed to take place today, and it has been postponed by 24 hours. So it could take a long, uh, you know, a, a long time. Okay.